Each autumn, a ritualistic struggle unfolds between the Hakai people and the Bajer people. The Hakai, a thick, burly clan nestled in the prairie, await the Bajer, also thick and burly. The Bajer chief elder enjoys the spoils of his people, subsisting on up to 10 pounds per day of earthworm flesh, rotting fruit, and the fine cheese curds the Bajer villagers offer to him. The Hakai are the first to draw real blood. The assumed prey quickly becomes the predator. Stunned, the Bajer warriors quickly realize they must vary their own charging ways to combat the Hakai. They do so quickly. Such actions are rarely captured on film in the wild. When fully grown, a Bajer warrior can grow to six feet seven inches tall and well over 300 pounds, and can cover up to 40 yards in an impressive eight seconds flat. The toll of the first successful Bajer strike is evident. Their thick, burly masses have become worn out and slower in escape. The Hakai chief looks on during these territorial conflicts and uses facial expressions and calls to convey his feelings. Contentment, disappointment, confusion, joy, and of course, pure, unhinged sass. The Bajer's natural armor suits it well in the close confines of battle. This warrior is rebuffed, but eventually, notches a small victory. An uncharacteristic speed attack by the Hakai. My goodness, the villagers are overjoyed. But the Bajer shake off the Hakai and use their mass to wound the prairie warriors once again. Breathtaking. And what's this? Resilience from the Hakai? A highly strategic move. My goodness, the Bajer are reeling. This wound could be fatal for such a thick, burly people. But ever a resourceful band of warriors, they use their keen, dairy-fed intellect to match the Hakai. And here comes the Bajer offensive. While things again appear promising for the Hakai in battle, we must remember the long-believed notion of the Hakai that, while fierce, they can only inflict damage for so long before tiring and conceding defeat. It is one of the few universal truths of the natural world. Nature can be cruel, but we must always remember why a natural order exists. It's the cruel mistress of destiny. And so it is. And so it is.